One of the big problems that we're facing globally at the moment is, uh, is plastics pollution. Uh, that's on land but also uh, at sea. Um, it all stems from our rather wasteful uh, overuse of plastics uh, and the fact that these things are often designed to have very short lifetimes of use uh, but then don't break down in the environment. When plastic was first created it was this scientific breakthrough that you know this robust material that can last forever um, and now this um, you know, scientific breakthrough is now one of the biggest environmental problems of our lifetime. I've been a marine biologist for, uh, for around about 30 years now, uh, and over that time I think understanding of the scale of impacts that humans are having on the oceans has grown and grown. And at the same time, of course, some of those impacts themselves have continued to grow. We don't really realise that there are pieces of plastic right down the very deepest, deepest trenches. In the Marianas Trench recently there was a paper where there were sea creatures there that were ingesting plastic all the way down these very deep, deep areas. I think it would help massively if people were actually outside, in an outside environment, seeing it for themselves. I think we become more of a nation where we're sat behind TVs and indoors every day, and that doesn't help in the sense that we're not really seeing the damage it does. It was highlighted by David Attenborough. I have to say thank you to him um, as so many of us are, because there's so many more people talking and listening um, about the problem. But in some ways, it's sad that it takes a television program to get people to start noting and listening to what we need to do on our beaches. The problem of, of marine plastic pollution has multiple causes. But the studies show that the majority uh, of the sources are based on land. Uh, it's because of the fact that we use plastics as society in a very wasteful way, a very throwaway um, uh, system that we have. So we're seeing uh, corporates and companies sort of coming out with these voluntary commitments, which is really great. Like, plastic is so of the moment. People really want to be seen to be making, making progress with this, you know, banning straws or saying that they'll go um, coffee cup free, things like that, which is just brilliant. But we have a government which is far too much in the thrall of big multinational companies, their influencers, their lobbyists. And what that means is action not just by consumers, responsible consumers who want to make a difference, but also, of course, by those who can really make the difference. That would be the retailers. It would be more action by government. If you give someone an option to use something that is perhaps costly effort, then a lot of uh, profit-driven companies will not will not do it if they have the choice not to. So I think companies should be forced to do things rather than just doing it out of choice. Companies could be doing much better, but it's clear the only way we're going to get that to happen is if we end up with a ban on single-use plastics. Uh, and that means we have to say to companies, you cannot do this, you cannot choke the planet. Coca-Cola produce um, a huge amount of the 16,000 plastic bottles produced every single second. And we're talking about single-use bottles there, which is one of the, um, the number one found thing on, on our beaches. It's, it's what's washing up on our shores. And Coca-Cola produce 128 billion bottles every year. Um, bottles should be recyclable. And do you know what? Most bottles are recyclable. It's the fact that we shouldn't have so many in the first place. It really is um, reduction that's the key thing. We need to really realise that this single-use plastic that we're just is everywhere, all over the shelves and the, in the supermarkets. We actually don't need most of it. We need to start um, carrying our water bottles thinking about how we eat, not buying off the supermarket shelves if it's wrapped in plastic and saying, no, your problem, you want to sell us something, you make a change. So ultimately what we have to do is get away from all single-use plastics. And that means you know, we really have to think about how do we distribute things? Do we need to distribute some things at all? And we can use alternatives that are much more sustainable. And that means that that plastic doesn't end up in big fragments and in very small fragments all the way through the oceans. Here we're in the, uh, the Sheffield Winter Gardens, lovely spot. Why not have a couple of water fountains where anyone can fill their water bottles up? You know, we need to change systems of simply how you keep hy hydrated. And that can be done without any plastic bottles at all. The Theresa May's recent statements on plastic saying that, um, it sh that that action should be taken by 2042 is absolutely terrible. Like this is killing, like this is killing animals right now as we speak. Um, you know the impacts of 
our habits are disastrous. It needed to be a 25 a month environment plan and plastic pollution is rife, it's a crisis that's happening right now. We don't have 25 years to deal with this, so you know, who knows what world's oceans are going to look like by that time. We have an estimated 350 to 400 million tonnes of plastic floating in our beautiful oceans out there now, and that's the larger stuff. I think what's perhaps just as shocking, perhaps in some ways even more shocking, is the fact that when we look closely, we see uh, even higher concentrations of what are called microplastics. So these are the small fragments of plastic, some of them manufactured in that way, some of them just from the breakdown of larger pieces of plastic. They are estimating that there is somewhere in the region of 150 million tonnes of microplastic floating or in the sediment in the sand. What we're uh, realising with microplastics is just how widely distributed they are. You can find them in every ocean, you can find them at every depth. We will find that marine creatures, whales, dolphins, seals, all sorts, they'll be impacted upon and there are, there are already lots of other stresses that these animals have to cope with in the ocean at the moment. Oh, man. Sinead, can you pass this guy? Plastic pollution is our biggest problem and the biggest problem probably facing our Earth at the moment. Perhaps more than, than any other issue, uh, the problem with plastic pollution in the ocean really illustrates just how unsustainable we've become as a species. I mean, I, I fear for humanity, to be honest, um, about the future of our planet. The only way that we're going to be able to survive is to like, hugely change our habits. 